Hi, my name is Shannon. I live in St. Louis, Missouri, and I garden in zones 6A and 6B. This is my first garden, and this is my first video. Um, I started to create this garden in March of this year and have been kind of adding on to it since then. Uh, we used to have honeysuckle and ivy that bordered the entire property and we had the honeysuckle and the ivy removed this spring which gave us the opportunity to create um, these gardens. I wanted to create this video to document my garden journey and uh, the transformation of the um, of the yard. My goal for this uh, video is to create useful content as I did a ton of research um, on videos when I was creating this garden and to be efficient and to not waste your time and my time. So let's get started. Okay, so this is my yard um, and this is my house and we're gonna get started. There used to be two giant trees and ivy and you really can't tell it now, but there was big patches where we planted new grass. So that really gave us um, sun for the first time. We tore out the ivy and planted this larope, and then started over here. So the hostas were existing um, and all, everything else is brand new. So uh, the boxwoods and the little, uh, let's see, golden oakland holly and this oak leaf hydrangea and uh, this uh, maiden grass all of these um, hydrangeas that are all the same i just have been splitting them over the years this is a blue um, atlas cedar this is a um, viburnum burkwood these three bushes behind the hostas are spireas called mellow yellow and they have a very cute um, little white flowers in the spring. Um, this is a sky pencil holly, actually three of them that I put together. This tree is new, it's a service berry. And then over here we have a um, lemon lime um, elderberry I think I'm saying that right and then this is a um, limelight hydrangea and tree form the boxwoods and the hostas we planted when we first moved in about 18 years ago um, actually the hostas I've been dividing over the years um, on my front porch are my house plants that I actually brought outside and put into um, big planters so they're a little sunburned but they're hanging in there um, and then those are yews, more hollies, I mean, um, more yews and more hostas, another um, limelight in tree form. And then over here on this side, which is the bigger part of the yard, um, I did two little matching mailbox areas. So it's just boxwoods, the golden oak, um, holly and um, a miniature maiden grass, a dwarf maiden grass, and a little giant arborvitae. And then over here, um, I see mold damage, is um, I planted more boxwoods, a dogwood bush, um, a red twig dogwood bush, um, creeping jenny, a lot of ferns because we have a lot of deer here. Um, um, Japanese forest grass. Uh, let's see, I gotta see the names on these. This is um, the winter canary dogwood, and this is the garden glow dogwood. And then some more Japanese um, sky pencil hollies. And let's see, what is this called again? This is a, oh, Sunshine Ligustrum. Uh, and then Hastas, these um, Kerr Snow Azaleas. So they are um, white azaleas. The color theme is green, chartreuse, um, and white. Let's 
see another oak leaf hydrangea. That one's bigger. Um, that is a, I forget what the name of this is. This was all ivy. Um, Blue Twins Holly. And then you can see some of you in like the holly sticks still in here. Not the holly sticks, the ivy sticks. Um, oh, this cute little Japanese maple. This coral bark Japanese maple. These are my dogs. I've got two dogs and two cats. Um, this is a little snow white mock orange that the deer ate half of, so it's recuperating. And a zebra, a little zebra maiden grass. And a teeny tiny um, uh, white lilac that I'm growing. So this is the side, that's Penny. This is the side yard or part of it. And then that's our feral cat. She's so sweet, she's not feral anymore. Um, and then we planted all of these um, green giants. They're little, so it's gonna take them a while. And this was all, again, ivy and um, bush honeysuckle. And this was a whole ivy bed right here. It made like a little um, kidney bean, kind of. And that, um, we planted grass. So some of the beds we just removed and planted grass. Some like this, we removed the um, honeysuckle and the ivy and put in new screening. And it'll take a while for that screening to get um, to be normal. So then on the back, we just have boxwoods because we didn't mind the view from our house to kind of this open area. And there is our house um, over there. Let's see, okay. And then, over here, um, this was like a little concrete slab that had a child's house when we moved in and we just left it. So I planted um, a white clematis. Um, these are just some plants that I overwintered inside. And then here is, um, I love this. This is um, variegated Salomon seal, another teeny tiny um, oak leaf hydrangea. Um, a variation of hydrangeas that I don't have the names for all of them because some of them I've just kind of divided and um, have been gifted. Some really sad looking Japanese um, ferns that will pop back. They just had to sit in containers too long. There's, the, there's Fu. Um, this is some uh, ground cover, cover called um, uh, I think it's um, dead nettle, but I didn't realize it had a purple flower, so I moved it over here. Um, here is a little um, sweet spire. I guess it's called like Little Henry, short and sweet, and some Brunera, some more white um, azaleas, some annuals to fill in the space. Um, she's so cute. She's a serious hunter. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so there is a tiny little um, drinking gourd hasta, an Anne Culpa hasta. There is some um, caladiums that were um, blooming that I bought. I did put a bunch of bulbs in the ground that have not started. They're just starting to come up. Um, this is it Artemisia or Artemisia, Silver Mound. Um, Robert Frost Hasta, a Hasta Blue Angel. And because we have so many deer um, where I live, we have to spray weekly. Um, so again, more um, Brunera, which the deer leave alone. I still spray it. Um, some uh, lamb's ear, which looks really sad because most of this just got planted in the last um, two weeks and they had to sit in pots for a very long time waiting for this part to be finished. Um, this is a variegated red twig dogwood. I love this. I don't like all the yellowing that's inside, but it could just be shock because it just got planted. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but um, I don't know. I think it's getting the right sun. Um, 
This is a Champagne Wishes Shrub Rose. It had so many roses on it. Now, um, it doesn't really have many, but um, it was so beautiful. This is a another um, Clematis that I've got. I've kind of got these all over the place, matching ones to kind of tie it all in. There's one on um, that trellis behind that chair, behind that bench. There's a, one on that trellis there. And then there's one on this trellis. And then um, there's one over here on this trellis. And then over on this area, there is um, one back here. So I kind of used that to tie in and keep repeating because um, I really did not do a ton of the same plants. I am new, so I wanted to try out as many plants as I could. So over here, you'll see, um, see lamb's ear, May breeze phlox, which was really pretty when I got it. It was covered in white little flowers. Um, it looks like it's done now. Um, this is a Tyrella. And then um, I can't wait to see this bloom. It is so teeny, but it looks like it's got buds all over it. And it's called um, Montana Sandwort. The cat bullies the dog, it cracks me up. Chip, get out. Um, okay, and then for, uh, to keep, you know, greenery, because obviously this will all be gone in the winter, I have some, um, these are called Celtic Pride Siberian Cypress. They're so cute and um, poofy. I have three of them. And then obviously I've got the whole line of green giants. Um, oh, I love this Japanese maple. It is a harp string, a harp string, um, Japanese maple, it's floofy. And then more annuals, obviously for color. I've got a bunch of astilbes back there. Um, our property line goes to like where the um, mulch ends. The plan is to continue with our neighbor's fence. Um, so we, we planted everything close enough in so that um, it has time to, and space to grow, to not grow into um, the fence when we get that. Um, here is kind of like this mini um, delphinium. It's cute, but I didn't realize that it was gonna be so short. Um, I like the tall spikes and this has short spikes. There is some white bleeding heart that I grew from bare root and some, um, oh, I got this, um, Foxglove Dalmatian White um, Foxglove. It doesn't have a spike yet, but I can't wait for it to. And then I have a bunch of this um, Bergarten Sage, which apparently gets huge. So that might be getting moved. And mixed in are all of these Astilbes, and, um, which were, were white, but now they're kind of brownish. And um, like a, a variation, like some were really little when I got them, some were big. Um, just kind of depending on um, where I got it and when. This is, um, hold on. So on this right here, I have a Snow Queen Clematis, a Tranquilite Clematis that I thought was white, but it's actually kind of this lavender. Um, and I also have this Moonflower that I grew from seed. And look, I think it's going to... Um, I think it's gonna bloom soon. I hope I'm around to see it. And there's tons of other little um, blossoms on it that I can't wait. Um, I have three types, or two types of salvia. I have the Proven Winners White um, Profusion Salvia and Snow Hill Salvia and a bunch of balloon and bell flowers. I love this. I've never seen this before. It's called Peter Cottontail Sneezewort. It's super cute. Um, a butterfly bush, it's starting to sprinkle, which is good. Um, the anem anemone, uh, the, uh, the Joe Burt one, which I can't wait to see. A bunch of different um, lilies, and I planted a ton of bulbs. So I've got gladiolas that kind of go along the back, as well as Casablanca lilies. 
Um, I've got white yarrow. Um, let's see, a miniature rose. This definitely will have to be moved at some point. It was so pretty in the spring, but it is a summer snowflake of Iburnum. So clearly when that's a mature size, it won't fit in this garden. So, I mean, I did a lot of research, but I still made, I already know I've made some mistakes. Um, Daylily Sunday Gloves. Oh, I found this geranium, um, white geranium. It's not blooming right now, but it was, it's so pretty. A bunch of um, Nepeta or um, Calmanthia. So it's uh, Montrose white and it's not blooming yet, but it will. This other one that I got, which was from Monrovia, um, is definitely blooming and it's gorgeous. I love it. Um, I have a bunch of peonies. The ones that were in front are bare root. Um, I got one bloom off a of bare root, which I guess is a kind of a good thing. But the two that I bought as bigger bushes, they have blooms this year. Um, then I've got, let's see, obviously my annuals. Oh, this is so cute. This little guy's adorable. Um, that is Carpathian Harebell White Clips. So little bell flowers. Um, this Ballerina White Armeria. Um, there's an Oriental Poppy in there. There is some um, Phlox, but none of my Phlox are blooming yet. There's a bigger one back there. A little, um, done. A little white rose knockout roses and they were really pretty um, but they again are also kind of done blooming this is luminary black black light flocks from proven winners um, a madame limon lilac which again when it's big it won't fit in here either um, this is currently my favorite I love it so much I'm gonna buy more of these it is um, Gara and Belizea White Gara. Um, so most of these plants are from big box stores, but uh, some of them are from local nurseries as well. Oh, this, I have high hopes for this, although I've heard not to get too excited. It is um, Elegant Snow Lavender. I've heard that lavender can be difficult, so um, fingers crossed that I can maintain that. My dogs trample all over my garden, which I need to learn how to train them to not do that. Uh, one of the things that I think has been the most interesting are all the different um, daisies. So there are so many daisies that I had no idea um, that come in all different sizes. Like there's a teeny, teeny little daisy over here, which isn't blooming right now. This little daisy, which is called Snowcap. This one, which is called Becky, which is the tallest. And had I known, I wouldn't have put it right there because it's blocking this super cute, um, what is this called? Where's the sign? Oh, let's see. It is, it's an obedient, um, Crystal Peaks obedient plant. So, um, I love it. It's so pretty, but unfortunately it is shorter than the daisies. So it's kind of blocked. So I will need to move that eventually. There is a um, ballerina white butterfly bush, a fountain, a pompous fountain grass. And then like, look at this little daisy here. It's called double darling daisy. It's super tiny, like really tiny. So there's just so many variations in size. Uh, um, this is a little group of snow um, cone flowers. So I have powwow white and white swan cone flowers, both in there and then um oh this was so pretty this spring this bluish um grass and this it was full of like carnation like flowers and it is um dianthus sent first memories had i known i would have bought more of those too super cute this is my little vegetable garden with peppers some plantains some seeds tomatoes eggplant um there's boo again I'm hanging out under my um, hydrangeas, my limelight hydrangeas. And something is wrong with my limelights. They are super bushy and looking beautiful, but there are yellow um, leaves. And when I Googled it, it said overwater, underwater, or lime. I'm hoping it's lime because everything else seems to be doing fine with water. Um, I am hand watering 
and I'm trying to go from the ground, but I am doing a lot of watering. I am the irrigation system, which is truly unfortunate. Um, this is a white chiffon rose of Sharon, and this was so beautiful. Clearly it's not blooming, but it was, um, or is, um, a immort immortality bearded iris, so pretty. So this is um, full sun and it kind of moves into shade. So this is, oh, and these are um, these grasses. I love these grasses, they're super bushy and its name is Feather Falls Carex and it's grown, like everything has grown and I love that it's all gotten bigger. Um, oh, that's another little um, hibiscus. Yikes, what was that? Oh. Um, called White Angel Hibiscus. And then there's a bunch of those Blazing Star Liatris, those white um, Liatris bulbs that are coming up. Um, and there's, let's see, what else did I forget to tell you? Oh, we have, um, down here is Creeping Flax, which is um, obviously not in bloom, it's spring. But I have that all the way down and hopefully it'll spread. And then, um, I will be editing that out. Let's see. Oh, and this is, um, this is Candy Tuff. Chip. 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 Uh uh. Stop. Um. Okay, so let's see. And then over here, I do have a small little, um, these are my purple irises that I had to move that are being choked out by um, Lily of the Valley. And these are, I had to move these, which is why they look so pathetic. But these are just the Stelladora Day Lilies. I have some mixed gladiolas, daisies, some irises that a friend gave me that she no longer wanted, another um, white clematis, some more moonflower seeds that I planted. You can't really see, but they're going. So these irises won't bloom this year. Hopefully they'll bloom next year. Ooh, and some caladiums that I planted that are bulbs that are just starting to emerge. Um, let's see, more house plants that I made into planters, um, which that poor bird of paradise got some serious wind damage. Um, and then over here is just kind of our little patio garden. So, it's really just um, the ropey, hastas, um, and over here, which is, again, I have gladiolas. I've got um, this vine back here, mattis. Um, and that is really about it. So I hope I've named everything. If I haven't, I'll put names in. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope that it has been um, somewhat uh, useful and educational. Should you be wanting to create a white garden or a moon garden? And uh, just really happy that you um, took the time to let me show this off to you. Thank you.